Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about simple text file input and output in Java. So to read from text files, to write text files, we're going to need the help of three objects, one old and two new. So the first thing we're going to need to take a look at is file objects. Then we're going to take a look at print writer object. And then we're going to take a look at how we can use the scanner object to read from a text file. Same object that we use to read from a keyboard, except for we're now we're going to be able to use it to read from an actual text file. So we'll get started by creating a brand new Java project in NetBeans. And just in this project files, and I'll name my package files. And we'll click our little finish here. And so what we're going to need is this thing called the file object. So what this lets us do is represent a file on our hard drive. So we can do something like this. We can say file F equals new file. And then in parentheses here, inside this part right here, what we'll do is we will specify a file name. And that file name can include a path or not. So you could just do something as simple as output.txt, or alternatively, we can specify some of the location. If we just do the file name itself, then NetBeans is going to try to refer to a file that is in the same directory as the project. Okay, the same folder as the project. But we can also do something like this. Like if you're on a Unix machine or a Mac, we could specify a full complete path name. So let's say that the file you wanted to work with was located on your hard drive at users john home output dot txt you can specify that entire thing um, you can also on a windows machine specify your drive and then double backslashes and then you could do something like windows double backslashes users double backslashes hank double backslashes desktop double backslashes output dot txt and alternatively, you can use forward slashes on a Windows machine as well, just like you can on a Mac or other Unix based or Linux based machines. You can do something like this Windows, Users, Hank, Desktop. Okay, so you have all kinds of options. You can also use relative paths. So you could do something like on a Windows machine dot dot backslash backslash dot dot backslash backslash output dot txt, which would be referring to a file named output dot txt in the parent folder in the parent folder okay so you have options on how you want to do this for this video we'll just keep it simple and we'll just create the output.txt in the default location which is going to be the same project folder as your program for netbeans now file is not built in so we'll import java.io.file and now what we can do is use this with our print writer object. So I can do something like this. I can say print writer, P, we'll name it, equals new print writer. And I can pass to the constructor for print writer a file reference, file memory address. And print writer needs to be imported as well. So the import for that is java.io.printwriter. And you'll notice that we still have a red squiggle under here. And that's because it's going to require us to deal with an exception. So if you try to create the file output.txt, you try to access it, you try to refer to it, and it doesn't exist, then print writer throws an exception. And that exception is a file not found exception. So what we can do is we can put this inside of a try block. Okay, so then we'll have our catch block down here. And we'll do file not found exception. And we'll just call that E. And then you can do inside of this catch part anything that you need. And you'll notice here that we've got the red underline here. We've got the red squiggle. So we have to do an import, which is going to be java.io.file not found exception. And then inside of the catch block, do whatever you would like in response to that file not being found. So maybe you just do a output message that says something like file not found. Or maybe we print out the stack trace so we do e dot get stack trace so maybe we just do system dot out dot print line you know whatever whatever you need to do in response to that file not being found now once we have our print writer object instantiated then we have all kinds of methods for writing to that file so we can use formatted print but we can also use print or print line with this so i could do something like you know hello i could do print line 32, I can do an integer there, I can do individual characters. So 
I could do like C, I could do floating point numbers. So maybe 3.145. Um, I could print to the file variables, the contents of variables. So if I had int x equals nine, then I could do p dot print line x. And the print line is going to work just like it does with system dot out. And it's going to put each one of those values on its own separate line. Now, if you use print, then they all stay on the same line. So print line puts a new line character after each thing that you put in the file. So once we're done with that, then we want to close our file. So we use the close method. And then if we build and run this, then that's going to create that file. And you have to be careful because if that file already exists, it'll get replaced by a new one. So any data that you had gets lost. Okay. So it was built just fine. So no output error messages. So now we can go and we can look and see the contents of that file. So we'll just open it up using our NetBeans. So I created a project called files, right? So we'll go look inside of there and you can see that there's the output.txt. So I'll open that up and you can see there's all of our values. Okay. So Print writer is very nice and very easy for being able to write stuff. It's not, not a problem at all to use it. And it's just as easy as this. And there are other methods that are available, which you can experiment with. So it pops up in the, in the browser here, and you can see that there's all the different types of versions of print. You can print strings, booleans, characters, character arrays, doubles, ints, longs. You can use printf, which allows you to print formatted strings, print line, different types of print line. So we have all kinds of options. Now the question becomes, well, how do we read from a file? And so we're going to reuse our friend, the file object, and we're going to do a similar process, but in reverse, and we're going to use the scanner object to make this happen. So how are we going to do that? So I will use an anonymous file object this time. We don't have to create a variable here. So we'll see how that works. And we'll do something like this. We'll do scanner s equals new scanner. And we'll pass as an argument to its constructor, a new file object. And then we're going to specify just like we did up here, a name of a file that we want to read from. So output.txt, we're going to read from that file. And since scanner is not built in, we have to import it. So we're going to have our job util scanner. Okay. And then since this is a file object, we also have to deal with that exception. So this time I'll just use an exception exception, which we can do because a file not found exception is an exception. It's got that job inheritance working for us. So we'll do our try block. We'll do our catch, we'll do exception E, and then we'll just print out the stack trace system dot out, but print line E dot get stack trace. So if I can't be found, then we'll see the error message. We'll print out the error message to the user. Now, once we have it open, assuming everything opens, then we can read from the file in the same way that we would read from the keyboard. So we can do s dot next int, next line, next long, next boolean, exactly the same as we would if we were reading from the keyboard. It's just that now the source of the data, the source of the input isn't from the keyboard, it's from the file output.txt. So I will just read one line from our file and it starts reading from the top when you open it for reading and I'll store it into a string, which I will call input. And then I'll simply just print it out. System dot out, dot print line, input. All right. And then it's important that once you're finished with the file that you always close it. So we're going to close the scanner object, which is going to in the connection between our scanner object and that file. But let's go ahead and test it. And we're going to see that first line that we wrote, which was what? Hello, right? Okay. So you could do that. Now, what if we wanted to print out the entire contents of a file? Well, we're going to use a loop to do that. And so the way we can use a loop is we can do something like this. We can say while, while loop, because use a while loop when you're not sure exactly how much stuff is going to be inside of a file or how many repetitions you're going to end up having. So what we'll do is we'll say while s dot has next. So what that does is that evaluates the true or false. It'll evaluate the true if there's still something more to read from the from the text file. So if there is, 
that will enter the body of the loop. We'll read the next line and then we'll print it out to the screen. System.out.print line. And then we'll put input in there. And then that will go line by line. It will read each line from the text file, put it into input, and then we'll print that out. So then we'll be able to see the contents of the file. Now notice that these are two separate operations. So there you go, you can see the contents. So we used print writer to write to a file, to create a file and write to it. And then we use the scanner object to read from it. Now, depending on the needs of your program, you're not gonna be doing both at the same time with the same program like I did here. Here, I was just using an example and showing you how each one of those work. Of course, you would apply this, either a scanner object or print writer object, depending on what you needed your program to do at the time. All right, so one more thing that I think I will show you is you know what if we wanted to do something interesting so instead of writing all these different things you know different types of data i will write all integers now let's say that i wanted to find the total of all of the values within that file so if i print 8675 to the file and we'll just temporarily comment this out so that way this code doesn't execute and we can just test our writing um, Okay, so we built, we wrote successfully. Now let's go reopen that file again. Open file, output.txt. You can see there's the values, right? 8675. So now if I wanted to add all those up, then I would do something like this, right? We're going to read in each line as a string, just like we did before. But before we can do any kind of arithmetic operations, we're going to have to convert what we read into an integer, right? So remember how to do that by using integer.parseInt. So we'll create a variable i that holds integers, and then we'll do integer.parseInt, and we'll pass to it the string variable that holds the string that we just read from the file. And then we can create a total variable, which will be our accumulator, which will store our running total here. And then we'll just do total plus equals i. Okay, then at the end, when we're all done with that, we'll print out the total. System.out.println total. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to see a total of what, uh, 26, I think, if I'm doing the math right. Yeah, so there you go. So it's just a matter of putting all the different pieces together, right? So this is, you know, kind of a sophisticated little program, even though it's not a ton of code. I mean, if you, we look at this little snippet here, we've got exception handling in here. We've, we're using a scanner object. We're using a file object to, you know, open a connection to the file. Then we're using that scanner object to check to see if there's anything still in the file. We're reading the next line in the file. Then we're taking what we read, converting it into an integer. And then we're adding that integer to our total. And that's going to keep going until we reach the end of the file. And then once we're done, we close it and then we print out the print out the total. So it's actually not a lot of code here, but it actually is doing a lot of heavy lifting for us. And so now you know how to use a print writer object, file object, scanner objects to create and write to text files and also to read from text files. As usual, if you're a student of mine and you have any questions about any of the content in this video or any of the videos in our courses, feel free to stop on my online office hours on Zoom or send me an email through Canvas. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.